Hi, Sharon Durbin Graves, Painting with Acrylics 101.com here in my studio today and we are going to do a product review of um, a type of paint that I just purchased at uh, Joann's Fabrics. Brand new to me, it's called Artsmith. Okay, and I'm going to uh, look at it with two other kinds of paint. So let's get moving. Hello there. I have three kinds of paint. This is craft paint. Uh, it's by Folk Art. It's called Evergreen. I'm going to have to shake it up because I know <laughs> I know it won't be uh, shaken up yet. I'm moving my brushes out of the way here. I also have this is a this is the reason for the video is I have a new um, tube of Artsmith paint. It came from Joann's Fabrics and um, it's in the hooker's green hue permanent now i also have a utrecht this is what i normally use acrylic um, artist acrylic colors it's a heavy body it's a hooker's green um, so we're going to look at the differences in the three kinds of paint i've never tried this before so i wanted to um, to do that so here i have with my craft paint and craft paint is not what you paint. I'm not going to put a lot out here. Maybe. <laughs> because you'll see why in a minute. Uh, why you don't use that to paint a painting with. And here is the Hooker's Green. Um, the Art Smith. And it was, um, it's a five, five or 6.75 fluid ounce tube. So they're not even making um, eight ounce tubes anymore. And then this one is a two ounce tube. And I love this paint, but these lids are terrible on anybody with arthritis. So I usually have, I have right here in my drawer in my paint cart, a uh, needle nose pliers because sometimes I need help. Okay, so I'm going to squirt out some of this. Okay, so there you can see that difference. Now, this hooker's green is, I'm looking to see if it's a hue or a deep or, because, just because it says hooker's green does not mean it's the same color green. There are deep shades, there are hues, there are some that are almost black, but you can see the three differences here. But the biggest difference, and I'm on a, this is a, a palette um, paper pad, and so I can just rip this off when I'm done. Um, but you can see the difference in the colors here and here and here. This is not a vibrant color. Okay, next to this green, it's amazing what difference it is. And this is much darker. I'm not sure that it's thicker, but it appears to be thicker. So we're going to take it over to our watercolor paper and look at it on paper and see how that works. Okay, so here we are in the studio. I have got the three different kinds of paint here on my palette. And I have to turn it around this way. Um, so we're going to look. This is the craft paint here. This right there. This is the Artsmith. And this is Utrecht. They are all a shade of green. But um, these two are both marked hooker's green. But one is do, uh, hue and one is permanent. Now this is craft paint, which you do not in my estimation, you don't paint a painting with craft paint, and here's why. It is, I'm, I'm half afraid to turn this very much because it's much looser than, um, than these other paints, and I'm kind of afraid it'll roll off. But it also does not have the same color. It's, it's duller, it's more, um, it's got other, uh, colors it's like got white mixed in it so it's not nearly as deep okay so now I'm going to rinse that off in order to give you a true 
look, there has to be some rinsing going on in between. Okay, so now I'm gonna pick up the Artsmith. Oh yeah, look how much thicker that is than that right there. Okay, so my brush is good and loaded. Okay, so you can definitely see the difference in the two right there. So now I am going to rinse that out again. Tap it off on the paper towel. You don't want soppy paint, okay? You don't want something with too much water. Okay, so here I am gonna pick up this Hooker's Green. Um, it's um, by Utrecht. It's a heavy body green. Now you can see that it does not move around much. So here comes this. Now these are base, supposed to be, they're both hooker screen, but one is a deep hue and one is not. So it's not going to be the same. I knew it wouldn't be the same. But what I'm seeing here uh, is this went on very smooth. This went on pretty smooth. Um, and I might have had a little too much water in my brush. So... Um, it, it's drying out. This is completely dry and as it, you know, acrylic paint dries, it gets kind of darker and duller. So this, you can see that it has much less pigment in it than that. So a craft paint is thinner and because of that, it has less pigment in it, it has more water in it. So you're paying more for water, but you're also not getting a thick, heavy paint to where you'd have to give this two or three coats to get what you want there. And, and that's nothing I'm interested in doing. Okay, so now I'm gonna rinse off this brush uh, and I'm gonna put it in my um, caddy over here. I'm picking up a, um, a script liner. So I'm putting it in the water. Now when you work with a script liner, you want your paint to be more like ink and less like paint. So let's start over here with this. Now you load it by rolling the brush in the paint. And then you kind of pull it out this way to get a nice sharp point. Okay, so if I wanted to, let's say a tree here. It's working okay. It doesn't have, it just doesn't have enough body in it to do what I'm used to it doing and what I want it to do. Okay, so let's try. I'm rinsing that out. Now I'm gonna put it back in the water. And t I tapped it off, but I didn't put it on any paper towel. Now I'm gonna come over here in the Art Smith and I'm going to roll that brush in the paint. That's how you load these. You don't just go like this because it won't be all the way around. So you load it by rolling it in the paint and then pulling it off to get a nice sharp point, okay? Okay, so here comes this tree. And these brushes do not hold much so you have to reload. These are very um, similar. As far as movement, but this is so dull that the color is just so blah. I, I really don't, I don't like the color in this craft paint. Okay, now I've rinsed that brush out. I'm picking up more water in it and I'm gonna put that water over here in and I'm rolling that brush. See, I was, I was just kind of mixing that water into the paint and now I'm gonna, to load the brush, I'm gonna mix, I'm gonna roll it this way. 
and I want to get that nice sharp point. Okay, so here comes this tree. It just is smoother. I don't have to fight it as much. Now, I'm not saying that this is the only thing I would ever use. This is, um, this green here, I, it, I do like it that it's heavy. You know, it's not sliding off the paper. This one here is starting uh, starting to um, go away. But I just, I just don't like this craft paint. And I know a lot of beginners use this. And I, I wish they wouldn't because they get better results. Um, with regular, uh, even student grade paint like this. They'll get a better result and the color will be so much uh, more vibrant and it has more pigment in it. Now I want to put this brush away and I want to bring back that other brush and I'm tapping it off in the water, tapping it off on the paper towel. Now when I do what I'm going to do here, I don't want any extra water. I probably should have done this part first, but it doesn't matter. So I'm going to work over here on this part of this paint. I'm just loading that brush. Okay, so now I want to, um, I'm just going to paint a leaf. Okay, there's a leaf. And here's a leaf. I like to see what all it'll do. Okay, now I'm going to rinse out this brush and tap it off because I want you to have a good something to um, compare it to. Okay, so here I am in the Art Smith, the one I got at Joann's, and I got it on Black Friday mornings and it was like 50% off. Okay, so here comes this leaf. And I, I do, and I'm just pushing and I'm twisting and lifting it up. Okay, you can see a little more of the brush mark in the leaf, which I really like. I like to see um, some brush strokes, some brush marks in there. Um, so there's several different, but you can see the difference in the color from that to that. Okay, I'm going to rinse that off again. Now, why would I ever use a student grade paint? Well, because I teach a lot and um, sometimes I'm just, I'm practicing myself. I am learning something myself. I'm trying to figure out how to paint um, people or um, automobiles or so. So I don't wanna, I know it's nothing I'm going to make that's going to, uh, it's nothing sellable. Uh, what I'm working on is nothing sellable. So I want, I, I'm just trying to save a little money, okay? So that's why I would use a student grade paint. Now I love this heavy body stuff. So here we go. Let's, I'm pushing, I'm turning, and I'm lifting. Push, turn, lift. Now I can go the other way. Push, turn, lift. See, I'm, because I'm left-handed, uh, my stroke wants to go one way. And if you're right-handed, yours will want to go the, an, another way. And, and you have to force yourself to learn to do that. I had to really force myself to learn this. Okay? Because my hand naturally wants to do that. <laughs> so you can see how there's a big glob right there. I might leave it, I might take it off. It just depends on what look it is I'm going for. If I want some thick, juicy paint, then I would probably leave it. So what I'm seeing in, and, and I, knew, I knew from the get-go, I would not want to practice in this. I want something that's going to be similar to what I normally paint with. Um, you want to build up muscle memory. Um, you want to make it so it's very normal for you. So I, I would not paint with this even in practice. It's too thin. It, it doesn't emulate or simulate um, 
uh, artist paint. Now this um, Artsmith, um, I like the paint. Uh, it's a very good student grade paint. Um, I know it was under $5 to, to buy this tube of paint because it was on sale uh, during Black Friday. So, you know, you can check that out. Um, but student grade paint will always, um, it's funny how you can tell the difference just by looking at the tube for the most part. Got to put this brush in here and get that off. You know, I don't leave my brushes sit in the water even for just a minute. I, I never do. Um, but just looking at these two paints, you can tell that this here is the student grade and this is the professional quality paint because of the way they're made. Uh, a professional paint is in a better tube. Uh, it looks better. Now, does it make the paint better? Well, normally if it's in a, a, a good tube like this, uh, it is a better, it's a heavier body paint. It's a, it's a good quality paint to use. Um, this is always going to be uh, a student grade paint, but for a beginner, there's no reason you need this. You're trying to create muscle memory and you're trying to understand how color works together. That's why you wouldn't want to use the craft paint because it's not true pigment. It's not true color. This kind of a paint is a true color. It has much more pigment. Now, this has even more pigment in it, but th this even says up here, light fast pigments. So you know it's, it's got some things in there as far as pigment goes that is going to make it um, a better paint to use than the craft paint. Um, I, I can't stress enough, if you're serious about learning to paint in a fine, um, a fine art style, you at least want to be using a student grade artist paint. You, there's a perfectly good place for craft paint. I have a ton uh, that I use for crafts, but for a fine art painting, you want something that's got some body to it and that has a good solid pigment background so that when you look for something that says hooker's green hue permanent, they should all be very, very close. These are not because they don't have the same, they're, they're not this hue permanent. This is like a hue dark. And, and so that's the difference there. But you can see that they are in the very same family for sure. Um, but if I'm going to learn something, um, if I'm going to practice something, if I'm painting something, I'm not sure where I'm going with it, I'm going to pull out this. If I am working on a, an artist grade painting, I'm, I'm looking for this. The pigments are better, it's heavier body, and, it, and I love the way it works. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. And if you know of somebody who wants to learn to paint, please share this with them. That's the only way my channel will grow. I so appreciate you being here today. I hope this has been helpful to you. So let's paint together real soon. So today we did a little experiment on three different types of paint. One was a craft paint, one was a student grade paint, and one was a professional grade paint. The colors were all very similar, and um, I just wanted to show you what you could do and what you could not expect out of any of those three kinds of paint. So if you enjoyed this, you know what to do. Give me a thumbs up, I sure would appreciate it. And if you know anyone who wants to learn to paint, please share my channel. Um, everything I do is for beginning painters only. It's all art fundamentals, foundations, the very beginnings of art, how to do very simple things, and that will improve your art in the future. As you learn the fundamentals of art, of color mixing, of perspective, of all of those things, your art will improve as you go along. If you skip all those beginning steps, you will have to back up and get them because they're just critical in learning how to paint. So thank you so much. Have a great day. Let's paint together real soon.